On the other hand, uh, the only way to keep the system from collapsing is to create more money and credit in these quantitative easings. And uh, in that process, uh, they just make things worse. Uh, there is uh, no uh, there is no solution in sight. They have not. The government and the Fed have done nothing to improve the status of the economy. Mm-hmm. And this CBO report that uh, Ted was talking about only just uh, reinforces that. But I don't think, though, that people are getting – the full impact of what that CBO report says. I don't think people understand because look at the stock market today. What has been up 128 points today? I mean, the futures were all up today. The European markets were up. Asian markets were up yesterday. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think people are being told that the big uh, downturn is about to come because of all of this artificial in, uh, elevation of the markets. Well, they're being lied to, uh, and that's what the major media is about because they control it. And they, uh, the lies extend through Wall Street and banking and government and transnational conglomerates. And so that has to be overcome, and that's what uh, talk radio and the Internet are all about. And we have to keep on slamming, you know, the truth to people. And that's the only way they're going to understand and to keep it as simple as possible. You know, A plus B equals C. And so I think we can do that. Uh, We don't need everybody to understand. Uh, I think half the people in America are quite concerned. Uh, I think of that that group, probably 75% truly really understand what's going on because they've been listening. And, uh, you know, you see the manipulation going on in the market this morning. Uh, they tried to hold gold down. Uh, you know, I'm an old tape reader. I'm, I've been in this for over 50 years. I could tell what they were do, doing early on. And when I saw it, I said to Judy, uh, gold will be up 40 cents today and uh, silver will be up 40 cents today and gold will be up over $6. And mm. you, you can tell by the rhythm. And, uh, and so that's what's happening right now. Well, we'll take your phone calls after this three-minute break with our guest, Bob Chapman. Right, we've got jam phone lines, so we're going to go right to the callers to talk to Bob Chapman. Let's go to Howard in Kansas. Howard, you're on the air with Bob Chapman. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hi there. In, in, light, in light of this current economic meltdown, uh, do you expect a back-to-the-land movement in large numbers? I mean, how hard would that be? We know there are spasms of it uh, now, but um, do you expect it in big numbers? Okay, when you and say back I'll, to the I'll land. Hang up and listen. Okay, Thank wait you. a second. Before you say back to the land movement, what are you referring to? Uh, creating community uh, with infrastructure, people, you know, the educational, um, you know, institutions, schools, land, um, you know, uh, all the things that people are disgusted with having okay. a stand antithesis of that in their own community. Okay, okay, thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Howard from Kansas. And your response, Bob? I don't uh, I don't think there'll be uh, a large movement in that direction. Uh, I think people are becoming more independently minded, and uh, so that might preclude that. But I think you're seeing people preparing for more difficulty. Uh, for different times, uh, for times that they don't want to see coming. And uh, that's why people put away uh, dehydrated and freeze-dried foods and have filters and seeds and herbs and mm-hmm. vitamins and all of the things that they need. So I, I think people continue to proceed in that manner. I think the the big issue is the storable foods right now so that no matter what happens, if you've got like three months' worth of whatever, I don't care if it's cans of tuna or whatever. Of course, I like Heartland Emergency Food. I think it is the absolute best. And I'll just give you the phone number for Heartland Emergency. That's the one I really believe in, 830-431-1776, 830-431-1776. And, of course, the Power Hour has seeds. Seeds, I think, are going to be incredibly important. I also think that it's going to be very important to have a greenhouse um, because we don't know what's coming out of the sky, and that seems like greenhouses are doing extremely well right now. Uh, I kind of see people going back to a community approach with their families and all, and I think that eventually we're going to say not no, but heck no, we've had it. 
and uh, we're going to say we need to redo this whole, we need to rethink this whole thing. Let's go to Ed and PA. Ed, you're on the air with Bob Chapman. Go ahead, please. Hey, guys. Hi there. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I needed a couple thousand dollars, so I took my some British sovereigns I, I have. That's what I like. So coin shop, they gave me a good price. They didn't ask my name. I didn't have to sign nothing. It was just, you know, give me, they gave me cash. And uh, so the gold is great. And um, the British sovereigns go for about – they're about a quarter ounce of gold. They go for about $260 for Ted Anderson. Now, if you go to Glenn Beck's website, they're, they're almost $500 because they're, they're ripping people off because they don't understand weights and measures. Wow. What do you mean they don't understand well, weights and measures? I think that's a good point. I, I think that's a very good point. Some of the dealers are taking advantage of the public and have been for some time in overcharging, and of course that's because they have to play, pay people like Glenn Beck, and uh, when Joyce and I get on and recommend something, nobody pays us. You got a hundred on that test. Yeah. Yeah, people that's... don't understand, like, uh, weights and measures, they, they get confused when, uh, like, a one-ounce coin is easy to, is easy, you know, um, it's around $1,200, but when you go, when you break them down into different coins, people get very confused with weights and mm-hmm. how much that like a coin weighs and how much it's worth. All right. Well, thank you yeah, very much, correct. Ed from PA. Thank you for that uh, information. And gold is easy to sell, too. I mean, you can just call Midas, and they will purchase your gold. Let's go to Kurt in Iowa. Kurt, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning. Uh, morning. I was just doing some figuring here. In the Constitution, it says that, um, that uh, gold will be 15 times silver. And if you divide the gold down, 1177 divided by 15, you come up with 7847. If you take $19 silver times 15, you get 285. There's a big discrepancy there as to, you know, it seems like silver would be much better to me. Whoa. Let's talk about that after this uh, one minute, 10 second break. Stay right there, Kurt in Iowa. We'll be right back. Let's go back to Kurt in Iowa. You had a question about uh, the price of gold. Bob, did you want to respond to that? Uh, I don't know the answer to that one. Well, what was the question again? About 15 times. Go ahead, uh, Kurt. Yeah, well, I, no, historically that, that's, that's so. And uh, right now I think it's around 65 to 1 instead of 15 or 16 to 1. And, but I think with uh, silver the most important thing is that for many years less has been produced than what is being consumed. The government doesn't have any silver left. It hasn't for some years. And... And that means all those silver coins that they uh, mint, they have to go and, and buy silver to do that. And also, you have an historically uh, extraordinary high short position in silver. And with the new CFTC legislation, uh, they have to cut back on those net positions as being too large, uh, controlling the market. And his two parties, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and HSBC, who own a, own, have about 43% of the short position. And I think they're going to be made to take it down to 10%. So with that said, I think both of them are covering their short positions and have been over the last three months. And once they implement the CFTC such a regulation uh, rules, they'll be down to 10%. And so that gives silver an added boost upward. So okay. from from a fundamental point of view, silver has a much better chance of moving higher than gold does. Okay. Thank you very much, Kurt from Iowa. Let me go to Bob in California. Bob, you're on the air with Bob Chapman. Go ahead, please. Yeah, hi. Uh, this is Bob. Yes. Um, I have a question regarding the... Uh, the insertion in the health care bill about the 1099 where transactions uh, $600 or greater are going to have to be uh, uh, fill out a 1099 to the IRS. Right. Um, what impact do you see that having? And I'll listen well, to first, the answer uh, on the radio. Thank okay. you. First, first of all, Robert, uh, I don't think it, it's going to uh, stay in that form. I think Dan Lundgren's uh, legislation has an excellent, excellent pa- a chance of passage. And if that happens, it'll be null and void. Um, what they're trying to do here is to back into people's assets and find out what they've got. 
and then it's a data collection operation besides being a tax. And it's just not on coins. It's on everything from, you know, wholesaler to retailer and other instances as well in, as sellers. And I'll go one step beyond that. The administration is talking about a 1% tax buying and selling on every single transaction you make. That includes a check that you would receive uh, into your account. Somebody owed you some money and it was $100. You have to pay the federal government a dollar. So that's sitting in the wings as well. Now they're trying to tax America to death and not cut back on government spending. No, I mean, what do you mean they're trying to tax America to death? I think they've already arrived. Thank you very much, Bob, for your phone call. Let's go to Cindy in Iowa. Cindy, you're on the air with Bob Chapman. Go ahead, please. 